welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd for No Reason podcast. I'm your host, Mark. I'm your other host, Raven. And, and our... we... Oh, oh go, go for it. <laughs> I didn't know how we were going to do that. You all know, right. it's, ir- it's ironic given our guest because he used to do that to me all the time and I'm surprised he didn't do it with the intro this time. So, but I will let you... It's me, it's your boy, a.k.a. Uh, Mark's brother, a.k.a. Boy, you lost his boyfriend, quick. A.k.a. Uh, uh, Chardonnay, the Pink Power Ranger. Whoa, no, AKA, sir. A.k.a. Stop. It's Chris. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Chardonnay, the Pink Power Ranger is just for Mark. Sir, you are not Chardonnay, the Pink Power Ranger. <laughs> only, only Kenny is. <laughs> It never happened, so anyone can be Chardonnay. <laughs> you just came out wild. Yeah, hey, everybody. It's it's Chris. It's my brother. It's it's, it's Raven's little boobaloo. You said my name too many times, and like Beetlejuice, I appeared. Yeah, that sounds right. Pretty much. <laughs> What's going so, on, man? Woo! I, I, who are you talking to, me or him? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Now the conflict of who's saying what to who. Oh, God. Right, I know. So, how? I mean, I, my week has been, I don't know, it kind of flew by. Like, I just, one day, um, uh, it was Monday, and then the next day, it was Friday. And uh, I got to tell y'all real quick about this trouble the troubles trials and tribulations that plagued mark this week because this was oh boy i consider myself a pretty handy person um uh, i have a background in electronics i can kind of troubleshoot stuff i worked on airplanes for 20 years fixing them so if something breaks i i tend to want to fix it Mm -hmm. okay and i can fix it for the most part depending um Typically, my biggest problem is that I don't have the specialized tools that I need to fix that problem. If it's a car problem, that, that kind of thing. Well, last Saturday, um, I was doing some Christmas shopping, and I noticed that my, um, uh, my, my car key fob wasn't working. It wasn't locking and unlocking Oof. the cars while I was out and about. So I had to get, like, right up on it. So... I got right up on it. I locked it. Cool. Get back to the truck later. You got to get right up on it to unlock it. Get back to the house from shopping, and nothing's working. I'm like, oh, no. Now the car still cranks up fine. All the electronics still work. I'm like, cool. Dead battery. Mm. So I go back in the house, or I go in my house. I change the battery. Uh, It doesn't work. And this is a brand new pack. I had to physically open the brand new pack and pull the battery out Mm -hmm. i was like oh no it's not working so i've tried replacing the battery in my other key fob still not working what's going on now i replaced my battery a couple weeks ago so i'm like hmm maybe something happened and it took a couple weeks for it to reset something another and i am trying to and everyone and i'm looking on the internet and they're like oh open your door three times and turn the key but don't turn it on put take it in and out sacrifice a chicken in your back seat, do all this stuff, and you're supposed to get this. None of that stuff worked for me. So everyone, every car person I knew said, take it to a locksmith. They should be able to recode the key. Cool. So come Friday morning, I got the day off. So as, as soon as they open, I am at the door like, hey, man, I heard you can do this. They're like, all right. And they take my key and like, did you change the battery? Yeah, of course I changed the battery. Brand new battery. He goes back in the back, and he comes out with this little tester. Now, keep in mind, I checked the voltage as well with my multimeter. I am going to get a new multimeter because somewhere it said my battery was good, and this battery was not good. Mm. Now, I've been driving around all week with a dead key fob. Certain, 100% certain it was not the battery. This dude replaced the battery and hit the button, and my truck started chirping and beeping and locking doors. And I was like, you such and such. I didn't curse in front of the dude, but, boy, I felt like an idiot. Yeah, oh, boy. Happens. I like but that you and I both had car troubles this week, so that makes me feel a little less 
sad. And all three of us kind of have electrical issues, too, oh, yeah. so this is great. I had to buy a brand new battery for my car, which is a 2020 Hyundai Accent. Mm. Okay, yeah. That sucker cost me two fifty eight mm-hmm. because I have a special car battery, and I wanted to die. And then yesterday, after I got my battery changed, I went home, went to... Regal afterwards, and when I got into my car after Regal, my little uh, screen where like my audio and calls come through, it just doesn't work right now. So I have to try and reset that. So I feel you, man. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry. Chris, what's your electrical problem? I think all of my electrics are dying in my car. Yeah. Oh, my, just, just blanket my... across the board? Yeah, yeah, I've got all kind of electrical issues in there, but one of them right now that's pretty major is that my left headlight doesn't work anymore. I moved the bulb over to the right side, and it worked fine. Mm-hmm. It is somewhere on the electronic side, and the fuse is fine. Oh. So, I don't know. I can't charge anything in my car anymore. That port's dead. Dang. That headlights, or the, the interior lights don't work anymore, and my horn doesn't work. So... Just good times. Love that for us. Well. Yeah. Well, so. And I close every day this week, so. And, and Real you, good to be come, driving home at night. <laughs> you know who was really, like, really kind of uh, uh, gave me that that sideways glance? Alice. She She really was like, when I told her what it was, like, she was really like, mm-hmm. Yes, Mr. Electronics. Oh, she's having you know. that teenage days. Yes. Oh, oh well, I mean, we like to give each other a hard time. So she was, she she seized this opportunity to very much give me a hard time. No, oh, of course. So, so. Mr. Know-it-all dad, have right. a hard time? Let's get him. True. So, and we had this great. We had this great bonding moment earlier this this week with um, I'm sure you guys have heard about the the Taylor Swift Ticketmaster controversy. Oh and we're gonna, God, yeah. We're gonna play a little game because uh, I played this game with her, and uh, this is my favorite game. And I really hope you guys have not looked this up. Um, we're gonna play name that ticket <sighs> price. Uh, I'll put something cool in post, maybe. I don't know. Maybe put some music there. Not sure. Um, So, Taylor Swift, international superstar Taylor Swift. World Tour tickets went on sale this week exclusively through Ticketmaster, who is known to be super-duper jerks about their prices of their tickets. Mm -hmm. So, dear co-hosts, I will ask both of you, the for Atlanta State Farm Arena ticket prices as of Wednesday. What was the most expensive ticket you could get with fees included, or better yet, if you specify with and without fees, Ticketmaster fees that they tack on? Dude, ten G's. I know it was definitely like in the thousands range because so many of my coworkers were try- like desperately trying to get tickets and they were like I'll pay anything and I was like all right um actually insane mm, they might uh, eat those words right i'm going to say like 5000 mm that 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 is a very good guess chris well, I said 10 G's. Okay. We're going to go closest without going over. Uh, price is right rules. Now, are those are those fees with or, or are those ticket prices with or without the Ticketmaster fees? Ugh. I guess with fees. Okay. All right. I would hope I, I that would be with fees for mine. Okay. But. I don't know the uh, like what the fees are that Ticketmaster It's a does, percentage. So I don't know. Okay. It's a percentage. It, it would be wonderful if it was just a flat rate, but it's a right. percentage. Um, Chris, you are you are the closest, um, but you are still nowhere near close. Isn't it like fifteen thousand or something? Oh, like that? you're getting closer. Sixteen, seventeen. Mm. What What does the ticket come with? Okay. Like, what do you do? Are now, you in the pit and ba- that's ba- it? Is it backstage? <laughs> now, here's the thing. It is actually cheaper. 
for you to get the Diamond Platinum Limo ticket excursion, ticket package, which comes with a limo, uh, takes you to a pre-show reception with hors d'oeuvres and drinks, um, special swag, a special place for you to buy additional exclusive swag, and I think maybe like a gift bag of some sort. No meet and greet. Now, uh. that is the most expensive ticket package you can buy. The most expensive ticket with none of that is about three to $4,000 more expensive, and that is right in the pit next to the stage. Oh, my gosh. So no chair. No, absolutely no. not. If you're no. in the pit. It's, this yeah, is like here. front row center. Um, but the stage kind of comes out like, you know, you know, it comes out, has like the alleyway or walkway out mm-hmm. to the middle of the crowd and all around that walkway in like a horseshoe pattern is sections. And it's like, oh yeah, row one, um, th- there's no rows, it's standing room only, but mm-hmm. they say rows is a way to mark up those tickets. So, um, so yeah, I'll, I will go ahead and tell you with fees, if you were to be right there in section in row one, quote unquote, it would cost you fifth, or excuse me, fourteen thousand dollars just the ticket. No thanks, I'm good. After the fees, it is eighteen thousand dollars and change. Oh, I so hate that. So you are spending the price of a used car to go see Taylor Swift and now now that is not a meet and greet that is not exclusive swag bag that's none of that that is just the ticket now the limo service is like 12 grand no i don't but it's no. but it's it's T Swizzle dude it's Tate off Swittler thank you did you see uh she came out with some music video recently, and she does horrible dancing in it. And everyone was like, this is the chick that you guys crashed Ticketmaster for? It's, it's no. I, I don't see that selling that big. Like, Yeah, I don't care who it is. No, it's not worth it. Now, in, in contrast to all of this, I want to point out that in June, I went and saw my favorite band, Twerp. It is a futuristic funk pop band from the future 1980s Canada. Um, And they were great. It was everything I hoped it would be. And uh, I went to the pre-show, like it wasn't a meet and greet, but they did like a little pre-show kind of warm-up concert You know, and you got like some swag and got some autograph stuff and all this. Mm -hmm. And it was great. And I paid for my ticket and my friend who drove up there. And both of those tickets together cost me about 150 bucks for both of that. So, you know, uh, a reasonable price, a reasonable price. And that is why I, I, I can't justify going to see these big bands doing these stadium tours because it is just, it's ridiculous. Beyonce, a couple years ago, her tickets were just as expensive, mm-hmm. you know. But I, I know for a fact that the State Farm Arena will be sold out. It will hold, it will have all 60 to 70,000 people. I did the math. We uh, we did the math at work to be like, hey, how much money does she stand to make? Assuming all the prices average out to say about a thousand dollars a ticket, or like two thousand or whatever, however much we said, maybe five hundred. I think mm-hmm. she stands to make in the neighborhood between sixty to ninety million dollars just on that show. And then merch. Yes, and then merch. That doesn't count merch. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of that money's not going directly into her pocket pays for the venue and does all this other stuff. But $90 million is a pretty good haul, you know, for basically two to three hours worth of work. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's and is this, this is a tour, too. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. No. 
I don't know yeah. if, how many if she's going to Madison Square Garden. Uh, I would assume she is, but probably if she's doing like multiple shows, also that thing will sell out too. Harry oh, Styles yeah. did like twelve or fourteen. Like he has the longest streak from this last tour that he did, uh, and they all sold out. And I can only imagine what Taylor Swift would do if well, she she's just doing, kept doing. She's it. doing three shows in Atlanta. Oh, a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. She's gonna. She's got the whole weekend blocked out. You know what? If people wow. want to go see it and spend the money, let them. Let them yeah. have their fun. Do whatever they want to do. Just uh, you know, don't get crazy out there. For good old Taylor. <laughs> Did your girls want to go see Taylor, Taylor Swift? No, we're not big Taylor Swift fans in our house. Like we know the like we know some of the songs, but you know we're not really. Alice kind of knows her a little bit because she's in that right demographic for for Taylor Swift, but it's not a big hit. No, I th- my, my kids would really much rather go see Twerp or something like that, and you know, kind of just groove out or like the Gorillas or you know, yeah. like like smaller people. Raven and I went and saw Gorillas. I know. It was I'm very kind of jealous. You should be. So. Um, yeah, didn't realize how many teenagers knew about the gorillas. That was weird. There was like a child that was probably like 10 to 12 standing next to me with his mom. And he was just vibing. And we were like, this is nice. Look at this they were annoying. giant demographic of just like people of all ages. It was cool. There were uh, some teenagers that were behind us that were very annoying. But I know. guarantee they only knew the gorillas for like their newer stuff. Yeah. And uh, they only played a couple songs from their newer albums. They played almost all of their first album. And I, you could hear them behind us not knowing any of the songs. And it made me very happy. <laughs> the little bit of hipster in me was like, <laughs> you guys came here for humans and you're getting stuck with the gorillas album. But, I mean, it was still a good show. Either way. Like, even if you don't, like, good. know the music, it was fantastic to go to. So you All right. Well, you guys, you, guys, uh, you guys ready to to do a deep dive that we've been teasing for, like, two weeks now? Yes. Are you ready to Chris? talk about Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to start real quick, actually, about... Um, you guys were talking about the, the no, this is good. The uh, po- Ash becoming the champion, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one thing that you guys didn't mention, because I wouldn't expect you guys to know, and I only know it because someone mentioned it on Twitter. The song that's playing during that moment is the original Pokemon theme song for Japan. Meaning, when it comes to the U.S., there is a chance that during that scene... We get a I want to be the very best moment. Oh. Which would be really cool. They could even re record it with the original dude if they wanted to, because that dude is like still down with being the guy that sang that Pokemon song. Oh, that would be so cool. Do you know how many like people like around our age would just be like, this is it? Yeah, I'd cry a little bit. Right? <laughs> oh, what? Something that cool? Yeah. That'll bring, like, weird music things like that. They bring, like, a little tear to my eye. It's really cool. I've seen I've seen a couple re-edits of, the, of that scene in uh, on, on, on TikTok recently. They've been, t- TikTok's been having a good time putting in different music with, uh, with that scene. Oh, God. And if they, if they don't, right, if for some reason they don't put that song in, It'll be the biggest flop since Scarlet and Violet. Reference to this Pokemon game <laughs> that works yeah. real bad. Yeah, uh, yeah I've, I've heard I've heard that uh, for a game that was designed for the Switch, it doesn't play really good on the Switch. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've also heard a lot of uh, different glitches that people keep seeing. I've been seeing them all over Twitter, where people are basically driving the invisible boatmobile from SpongeBob, 
because they like <laughs> yeah. get on their bikes, but the bikes don't appear and they just zoom off while in the sitting position. Or that you can uh, Gigantamax your own character, but then they look super weird. Yeah. There's a lot of wild stuff going on in this game. Yeah. I was, uh, a buddy of mine was playing it, and a lot of the game takes place in a classroom. And he said that all of your classmates are running at like seven frames. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they've been teasing this game for for months now, too. So the fact that... Well, they they, they screwed up, right? Because I don't, know, I don't know whether to blame the Pokemon company or blame um, Game Freak, the people that actually make the game. Because I'm, I personally, I think it's the Pokemon Company's fault. They want to punch or push everything out as fast as they can. They put out three Pokemon games this year. Yeah, that's insane. That's wild. Well, like, which three did they put out? Legends Arceus. That was this year. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, oh, that was wow. like and, right as I was coming uh, back was, from Kentucky in March. What was the other one? There was another one that that came out that I'm blanking on. That was around the same time. It came out like two months. Oh, oh yeah. Brilliant Diamond yeah. and Shining Pearl. Oh, yeah. That came out like two months later. Yeah. And then They've been doing a this. lot. They put... They, well, that's way too much game. In a Pokemon <laughs> Snap game? Yeah, that one came out last year. Yeah. But that one's really good. And that I, one's fun. They're doing way, way too much trying to push that. Uh, all that stuff through when they need to keep stuff in the oven a little bit longer, let it bake. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, that being said, I would probably still get the new game, to be honest, just because I want to see what the hype is. Also, I think it'd be kind of funny to watch all the glitches if I'm being honest. <laughs> I, I anything that I see on Twitter or online anywhere, I always have that you know take it with a grain of salt because I don't know how true it is. One glitch I saw: some dude get into a Pokemon battle and afterwards it glitched him on onto a little island in the middle of a river, and he had no way of getting off the island. He was just stuck. Oh, oh. wow! <laughs> well, you, He's like, I don't know what to do. Did you see? Uh... In our Discord chat, the one guy that kept finding shinies, he literally had just gotten the game, and he was like, oh, second shiny, and he had only been playing for like 10, 15 minutes. And we were like, how are you hacking the game, dude? Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> that's really funny. That's a really funny glitch, though. If that is a glitch, that's really, really funny. Oof. I don't know. I still... So more, m- I don't more Pokemon things? Because it's a game. That's a game we have. A, none of us have actually played yet. So, yeah, I'm, I might, I might get it on. I'm, I might get it from Sweden later on. See it. See if they work out oh. all the bugs and stuff. Yeah. Speaking of which, Mark. Yes. You never played the original Pokemon games. No. I want you to. I have played. Let's see. I've played part of, like the first four or five gyms in Sword and Shield. Yep. Uh, up through there, that was pretty fun. Um, and then I kind of slowly just kind of got bored with it because cause you so, cause once you get to that point, you're kind of just grinding your characters. And um, I was getting frustrated because I'd really started beefing up a few of my um, a few of my a few of my my boys. And um, I had a um, um, oh, what's the tiger dog? Um uh, the tiger come on, dog? Come on, Chris. Arcanine? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I had an Arcanine <laughs> and he was he was he was he was wrecking shop, right? So uh I I I loved him and cared for him and uh my my Gyarados and we were we were a a team to behold. But I couldn't catch Pokemon because you know, even though I had beat them, they wouldn't let me catch them because I wasn't a high enough level. And I was like, this, this sir shall not pass. Or I hadn't got far enough in the game. But I was like, oh, guess what? You can't catch this 
one level Pokemon because you haven't beat this other gym or something. I can't remember whatever the hell the thing was. And and yeah. that honestly frustrated me. So. so this is why I want you to play the first ones, okay? The f- how did you how did you like the story of Sword and Shield? I mean, it was it's it's it, it's shit. You can say it. It's, it yeah, it's bad. I mean, I mean, it just seemed on par <laughs> with the other Pokemon that I've played. I mean, po- I played um, Pokemon uh, does Omega not Ruby. Do stories. I mean, you got me Omega Ruby. Yeah, uh, and I played that almost all the way through, and then I again lost interest with it. Because you get might, to kind of the yeah. point where you're like, you know, grind, 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 grind. So that is the best story, and even it's not good. Um, original red and blue, there is no story. It's all right, go beat all of the gym leaders, and then go beat the elite four, and or collect all the Pokemon. That's it. There are no things. That slow you down. Any any time that like the newer Pokemon games, the things that slow you down are when people decide to talk to you for an hour. Um, but like in Sun and Moon, I literally yelled at a uh, character into my DS because <laughs> she would not just shut up, and I had to have this like twenty minute long conversation with her on an island with weird looking uh, executors. And I was just yelling at her to shut up because I just wanted to play the game. In original Red and Blue, um, th- that doesn't happen. Anytime someone stops you, 99% of the time, it's a Team Rocket member like, hey, no, we're fighting now. And so you just keep playing the game. <laughs> okay. Um, and once you get 80%, not even 80 like 70% of the way through the game maybe, you can cheat because the game is not very well made and you can duplicate items that you have. So you can duplicate a rare candy to have like, I don't even remember what the exact number is. It's something like 127, something like that. That's a oddly specific number. <laughs> it is. And when you, it, it's very, very strange because it's, Messing with the game code. So, is, so is have they do. have they released this? I love, like I, I know I'm going to have to go the the emulator route and play this. Have they made this for like Game Boy Advance, or do I just have to get it on like the old green screen Pokemon? So, or uh, they game have, Boy? yeah, they have Fire Red and Leaf Green, which are the remakes. Okay, with um. It's running off the same engine that Ruby and Sapphire ran off of. Okay. Which is fine. But again, that one also does some weird story stuff. And it like stops you progressing at one point to where you have to go do this other side thing for a second before you can come back. And it's it's really weird. Um, I kind of like the dumb side quest. I'm not even going to lie. I, no. I know. <laughs> this, this one's weird because it, they just added it to the game. It's not something that was in the original game. And so it's just like, why... Why do I have to go to this? And also, if you, they talk to you and they trick you, right? Because you don't have to do it. But but as soon as you go, oh, yeah, sure, let's check out this other area you want me to check out. You're stuck there until you do it. Oh. You can't leave. <laughs> so, and it's not difficult, but it's, you're, you're like, I just, I'm, it happens right at the end of the game. You are, you get your seventh gym badge. So you have one badge and then the Elite Four and you're done. And they go, no, 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 no. No, I can't do that yet. <laughs> now, Chris, I know you've done you've done something similar to this. Um, I don't know about you, Raven, but have, have you guys ever done what's called the Nuzlocke Pokemon run? Um, Raven definitely has not. No. I don't think she knows what that is. Raven, do you know what that is? No. Okay, let me let's give the backstory of what a Nuzlocke is completely. Okay, so, Nuzlocke came about from a web comic back in the day, where this guy had a Nuzleaf in the web comic. It was a guy that was like in the Pokemon world in the web comic, and he had a Nuzleaf. Mm-hmm. At some point, the Nuzleaf turned around and looked at the character with John Locke from um, Lost. Had John Locke's face. That is the where the name Nuzlocke comes from. What? 
Yes. And the whole point is in the comic, as they were going through, um, the characters or the, the Pokemon would die whenever they would uh, whenever they would faint. They would just straight die. Oh. So a Nuzlocke run is typically the two there's like two main rules. One, the first Pokemon that you encounter in a route is what is your encounter. You have one shot at catching that Pokemon. If you kill it or it runs away, you run away, whatever, that's it. No more Pokemon in that route. You threw away your chance. Two, if uh, if a Pokemon of yours faints, it is dead. You have to either release it or put it into the PC box that is marked as like a graveyard or whatever. Um, one rule that pretty much everyone uses just because it makes you have a bigger bond with your Pokemon is that you have to nickname it. Mm -hmm. Uh, those are the main rules. A lot of people have added way more rules since that, but those are the main ones. Um, Raven's never done one. I, I have kind of, I've done what's called a soul link Nuzlocke. Which is a co-op version of that. And it's a little more complicated. Me and a buddy of mine, we did one together where our Pokemon were linked together. So if one of the two pairs, or one of the Pokemon in these pairs, fainted, the other one on the other person's game would also be dead. And that makes the game way harder, way, way trickier, <laughs> and way more frustrating. Because whatever Pokemon you guys catch in that route, that, those two are linked. So it could be, oh, hey, you caught a Mewtwo and I caught a Pidgey. So your Mewtwo is going to be real good. But if my Pidgey dies, your Mewtwo's dead. Oh. Yeah. So it, it kind of becomes the, and you have to have the same Pokemon on your team. You can't, like, I couldn't throw away the Pidgey into the box and he keep the Mewtwo. Oh. So it was, oh, no. yeah, it was like, well, <laughs> Pidgey's going to sit in the back, I guess, while Mewtwo wrecks house and my other Pokemon are just going to try to do their best so that the Mewtwo doesn't die. That's, that's a lot. I don't like yeah. that. I, yeah. I know that would really fun. infuriate <laughs> me. I have done uh, runs where I only use the starter Pokemon. I evolved it because I'm not an idiot. But only use the starter Pokemon to get through the whole game. Mm -hmm. And those are those are fun. Real fun when you have to grind to get your, your Pokemon up to be able to beat the Elite Four. That's real fun. <laughs> so, what's your favorite Pokemon? Sceptile. Uh, who what now? <laughs> Sceptile. He's a big green lizard. It's one of the... Evolutions of a starter Pokemon. Yeah, you played. Um, Is that the third you generation? Played, um, yeah, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. You okay. played one of them. You know the tree, the the gecko, the green one. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's the evolution of that. All right. He's like a cool grass ninja lizard, so he's really cool, <laughs> and he's super strong, and he's the best, and he'll beat you up if you don't say so. So he is pretty. All right. My dad will beat your dad up, you know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure your dad will beat Mark's dad up. Yeah. I'd love to see it. I mean... <laughs> In a way he already has. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure if you get him enough alcohol, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure he could. Ooh, well, we won't talk about that. <laughs> what about you, Raven? What's your favorite? I mean, I feel like... I emotionally and physically uh, relate to Snorlax. Snorlax is just kind of my number one go-to. Obviously, it's just like a re it's just like a regular normal type, um, where it just you know eats and sleeps and does whatever. But I feel like uh, if I had to choose a different Pokemon, I did really like Grookey. And the evolution of it from the sword and shield. 
Yeah, he the was pretty grass great. monkey. Yes. He's great. I uh, really gr- liked him a lot. Gorilla Boom, I think. Was that, was that who that was? Gorilla Boom. Yeah. yeah. He was awesome. He was really good. I really liked that one. What about you, Mark? All right, Mark, what's yours? I think in tracking with Raven, my my, my, my spirit Pokemon is probably Ludicolo. Sounds because good. he looks like he is the party. Um, uh, I dare say that the Pokemon uh, Detective Pikachu, even though he was in it, which I was thrilled, but he should have been in like a party scene, just living his best life. Instead, he was a barista in some dingy little bar serving coffee. Now, Ludicolo's wild. Like he, like him and Little John are having, you know, <laughs> parties. Um, as far as like, I guess my overall favorite, I'm, I got to say Blastoise. I mean, he's a turtle with water cannons sticking out of his back. He's awesome. It's pretty solid, you know. Mm-hmm. The first like three uh, main evolutions from the first generation, they're all super solid. Like some, you know, you get into some of the generations and you're like, what the heck did they do with this? Yeah. Yeah. But for the most part. I mean, they they did start off, like, really strong, you know. Yeah, well, then, you know, I guess it's the thing of, let's just start pushing the most random things. Because, you know, with the newest uh, of the three, when the whole, like, oh, the new Pokemon are out. Let's see what it is. And everyone was like, what the heck is this stupid little duck with the fancy hair? You got, like, a little... shall not stand. (laughs) <laughs> for, for Quaxley, um, uh, 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 shame is it shame? Quaxley no. slander. Yes, slander. Thank you. We shall not stand for Quaxley slander uh, on this podcast because not only is he a dapper duck, uh, but um, he evolves into a a, a Sir Quaxwell and a, uh, a a a master Quackaval. So. <laughs> No, but, like, that was the thing uh, is on Twitter. Like, everyone was going off on the stupid duck for, like, the first week. And then they were like, no, maybe it's, like, the most, like, decent character. Because everyone was like, oh, well, there's another cat Pokemon. Like, it's just another one of those. Although the cute little peppery dragon boy, I do like him. He looks super cute. He looks like he'd be a good little pal that you just take on a little picnic. Mm-hmm. And you'd have fun with. Weed cat. Yeah, <laughs> weed cat. <laughs> Sprigatito all day. Nah. I'm gonna always choose the grass starters. <laughs> no, I always choose the. I always choose the water one. And when I was playing Sword and Shield, I got so mad because there's so little fire Pokemon in that game. <laughs> Yeah. And when I got to my first gym, I was like, I need a fire Pokemon. And had to traverse all the way back until I found an Arcanine. And then spent, like, forever getting him beefed up so he could just go in there and wreck, wreck the, the grass-type gym. Hmm. But I think it was like him and needed I... needed a bug-type Pokemon. What's that? You need a bug-type. I don't bug know that. super effective against grass. I don't know that. It, it, I, I know, like, the three main powers and weaknesses. That's it. <laughs> like, I, I literally, as I was playing, <laughs> is I had a chart over on my second monitor that had listed all the types and what they were strong and weak against. Exactly. I, I was exactly just, which so, one you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I use that a lot, too, because I'd be like, crap, I forgot again. What's this weak one, too? Because I would either, like, just look at Chris and be like, hey. What should I use? And eventually he was like, sometimes he just wouldn't know. So I was like, okay, I'm just keep the chart up. <laughs> yeah, some of them are weird, but like grass is ice, fire, flying, and bug. Because ice kills grass, fire burns grass, uh, birds eat grass, I guess, and so bugs. bugs eat grass. Yeah. And then obviously with fire, you've got water. And then, isn't ice also? Nope. Is it not? Ice is not very effective. 
Oh, that's right. Because, I mean, it would just melt it. So, yeah, just water. Nope. Water, ground, and rock. Kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what's your... So, so out of the almost a thousand Pokemon that are that have been released now... It's over a thousand now. This game makes it over a thousand. Okay. Yeah. So, out of Wild. the thousand plus Pokemon, which ones are... They can just go die in a fire. Absolutely pseudo Wudo. Just wow. trash Pokemon. I hate him. Wow. That thing's adorable. I stand by stupid. It. You know what? He's a cute dancing tree. Okay, first of all, Bonsley, adorable. I love the like pre evolution of it. But pseudo Wudo, just like what do you do here, man? Nothing. Oh is that aromatis? Aromatis can burn in hell. I hate that Pokemon. Oh, that Pokemon's ugly. <laughs> like, it's like not even fun to look at. At least some ugly. of the Pokemon that are bad, it's... Honestly... Like, they're I, fine to look at. That one is just trash. I'm surprised it. you didn't say Venonite. No, that one gets a lot of hate. I don't like it for, like, originality's sake. It's lame to me. It's just an ice cream. But it's a pretty good ice type. Yeah. Mark? Yeah, no, Aromatis is I mean, it's gotta be Jinx, though, right? Ugly. No, Jinx is great. I mean, mm, Jinx is actually really good. Mm, Jinx is fast. Yeah, when I played high special attack. When I was still playing Pokemon Go, I had like a shiny Jinx, and I had her leveled up pretty high, and she was very good. Mm. I dropped her in a lot of gems. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I I mean, I don't really have one that I dislike. You know, because I don't really know it them. that much. Um, yeah. I'm really trying to think if there was one that, that I played with or that I was like, oh, no, you're hot garbage. You have to go You have to go into the computer never to be seen again. Um, yeah. Most of them, even if they're not good, I'm like, eh, whatever. Like, they're fine. I yeah. mean, but, you um, know, there's some that their only move is just like, you know, harden. Like a metapod. Metapod, yeah. yeah. Metapod, Kakuna, Silcoon, yeah. Like stuff like They're that. Great. Yeah. Sucks. And Magikarp gets bad, bad rap, but I don't, want, I don't want to poop on him too much because Magikarp's you know. a G because he evolves into Gyarados, dude. Right. Yeah. Unknown is pretty garbage. Yeah, I don't get the hype over them. Unknown has one move, and they had a movie that made him look super cool, and it is not. Rip. Uh, yeah. Like there's a like like I said, there's a lot of Pokemon that are like, eh, I don't think they're that cool, but Aromatis is the the one that I think of when I think of Pokemon that I wish didn't exist. Clefki's lame, but again, it's fine. I'm not gonna Steel lie. Fairy type makes it pretty good. When you say oh. Aromatis in my head, I thought of Pulti guys, and I don't know why. And it just now like no, clicked. I was like cute. But it's just a cute little teacup. <laughs> Yeah. Another cast form. Another one oh, that I yeah, really no, like. Cast forms ass. <laughs> another one that I really like that I really like the design on is the Alolan Marowak. That one is yes. cool and should have been the actual Marowak. It's so neat. Because well the Alolan, he's like stomping the yard with a with a fiery fiery fire stick. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He's cool. I I pitched a little temper tantrum around my friends uh, when when we did a raid for the Alolan um, Mirawak, uh for Pokemon Go, and everyone caught one, and I had ten Pokeballs that did not catch him, and I was furious. I, I hated was mad. When that would happen. Oh, oh man, this is fun. There's a, a Pokemon Muna who is like Gen 5, I think it is. I think it's the 5th Gen. And is referenced in the very first Pokemon game. Some guy was like, I wonder if we can have like this pink Pokemon with like purple polka dots or something like that. And he he references almost exactly what this Pokemon wound up looking like later. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, Swadloon. Have you seen Swadloon, Mark? You need to look up Swadloon because it's Batman. Oh, he's so cute. I'm just a little baby. Little grass baby. Yeah, it's supposed to be a bug and like a wrapped in a leaf, but he looks like Batman. 
Nah, him a grasp of a baby. He looks like a little pea. Yeah, he don't look like, got, like Batman. Little, right look at his look at his angry face. He's Batman. He'd just be like, I he, am. He's vengeance. about to do vengeance. Although yeah. the full evolution of it gets up to that big, like, tall. What is it? Levani. Is that Lilligan? Oh, Levani. Yeah, I like that one. All right, we're gonna play a uh, Smasher Pass Pokemon or. All of them. Let's start. Number one, Bulbasaur, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Pass. Oh. All right. Wow. Ivysaur. Stop uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There's that aromatisse. God, I hate you. Ugh. It reminds me of people that I hated in, like, in college. The people that were like, I'm going to go and dress up for, hold on. You need to. You, I'm gonna type this in in our little Discord thingy so you can look it up, so you can understand what I mean when I'm saying how much I hate this Pokemon. But it reminds me of the people in college that are like, I want to dress up. I want the, these chuggy girls. They're like, I want to dress up for Halloween. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna go grab a bunch of um, tutus and put those on, and it'll be something. I'll wear a tutu with wings, and now I'm a fairy. Or whatever. There was always a tutu involved in whatever costume. And they, they got to be wear. chubby and, and four foot them. two. Ugh. They were always annoying. Yeah, and that's aromatis. Even trying to show some leg. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> that's the Pokemon that'll get like a real Chris rant going. <laughs> but let's remember, we did watch a very classic movie from the 1980s. Yeah, we did. 1985's Teen Wolf. Ow! <laughs> 1985 was a big year for Michael J. Fox. Like, this came out, and then right after this, Back to the uh, probably his most famous role, yes, Back to the Future. Yeah. So, um, because I've seen this movie a bajillion times, uh, I will... I will ask the question that I ask every week. Uh, Raven, Chris, what did you think of Teen Wolf? I'm just Go, Raven. Okay. I have actually also seen Wolf, uh, seen Teen Wolf quite a number of times. So this is when my first go around watching the movie. I did really like Michael J. Fox, like, as the character. Um, I like that he's, you know. This little nerdy kid, and then out of nowhere, starts transforming into a wolf, and he just becomes the big old jock. That everyone eventually hates, because that's how movies work. But I know darling Christopher hasn't ever seen it until this week. So what do you think, Chris? I like Michael J. Fox, and I didn't like this movie. Oh, that's fair. That's I fair. think it's overhyped. Well, I wouldn't say that. But no, I think it is. I think it's been an overhyped movie. People talk about it all the time, like that I've heard, and they're always like, oh yeah, Teen Wolf, Teen Wolf's great, Teen Wolf, the the, the car surfing, whoa, okay, it was fine. <laughs> Dude, my I man was, was out there like, doing fine. flips <laughs> and push-ups, or not like push-ups, but like Handstands. standing upside down, yeah. Yeah. What? Like maybe it's just the time, right? Maybe like when it came out, or if I had seen this before a bunch of other movies, sure, but... I don't know. It's just a movie. There's, well, the <laughs> man, watching it this time, critically, okay, because I, I couldn't just shut my brain off as I was watching this, like I, like I tend to do and just kind of do something in the background or whatever. I'm watching it this time. I'm taking notes, you know, things that I want to bring up. And as I'm watching it this time, and I loved this movie as a kid, like, seven-year-old Mark, it was Lost Boys and Teen Wolf. I remembered all these movies. Um, watching it now, as a full-grown adult, the first thing I thought was, every single person in this movie is too old to be in high school. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Every <laughs> single one Dude, of them. Dude, the chunky kid literally looks like he's like... He's like a 40-year-old. Right. <laughs> right. So, this sent me down a rabbit hole. Um, uh, I had to go look up how old everyone was when this movie came out. 
So, if you if if I can entertain you for a little bit, we'll start with Chubby. Uh, Chubby was twenty seven when this movie came out, Bro, <laughs> playing shame. playing a presumed eighteen year old. Um, Styles was twenty eight. Michael yeah. J. Fox was twenty three. He was the youngest person in the cast. Guess how I mean, he old? Does look like it. Guess how old Boof was? Dude. Oh no! Dude, oh, is she I talk about that name too. Jesus Christ! Dude, is she like <laughs> Boof was twenty eight. Okay, I was gonna guess like because you were like guess how old, so I was gonna say closer to thirty. Yeah, so but she looks the youngest out of all of them, you know. Yeah, like she actually looks like okay, cool. She's a teenager. I can buy this. Like it, it's pushing it a little bit, but you know she still looks like she could pass as an eighteen year old. You know. What about the? Did you look up the age for that? boyfriend of the girl that he was like trying to get with uh, and then slept with and she was like actually no uh that's still my man's you were just you know here for a fun time yeah um i think i think i looked him up i think he was like late 20s as well yeah. um every everyone was there was no one who was even re- like michael j fox was the youngest person so no one was even remotely close to high school age yeah so oh. it shows I don't understand why, like, movies and t- TV shows, like, do stuff like that, where they're like, yeah, sure. They're, like, way past the age. Like, in Greece, where it's literally, like, everyone here looks 30. Right. How are they supposed to be in high school? Insanity. And that and that was, I don't know, I think that was a thing back in the day, um, back in, like, the 70s and 80s. You know, and and, and I kind of get it because you can't have kids that are quote unquote still technically in school working during the day. There's there's laws to protect those kids, but you know that they can't work but so many hours before they have to take a break to quote unquote go to school, which is just some teacher on set who's like, okay, stare at this book for an hour, then you can go back to playing make believe with your friends and get paid r- ridiculous money. Um, yeah, but it's. I, I don't know. They, I feel like they could have fixed all this if they would have put everyone in college. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I was like, uh, during their, uh, during one of the like the school scene where he was like going up to the board and then his hands turned into uh, wolf hands. I was like, man, this would be perfectly fine looking if it was college. Yeah, this looks like it could just be a college class with all these adults sitting in this room. Right. right. Yes, I, I I wrote this down. There was that scene. They they. The, the they do a shot of the classroom and I had to pause it because there is a lot of stuff going on in this classroom that doesn't make any sense at all. Um, there's two girls up front who are wearing sunglasses and like th- I think they're wearing a hat but their hair's all did up. They're obviously painting their nails and I'm like, what the, f- what, the what the hell are they doing? And then there's Chubby in the middle of the classroom, just literally taking up all the space. Um, every like everyone, every character that we've met so far is in this class. Yeah, and it's only like maybe fifteen people. <laughs> yeah, dude, Styles, it's weird. the shirts that Styles was wearing to school were just insane. It's like oh. nowadays. If you were cut on campus with anything like that, they'd be like, go home and change. Right. What yeah, was the yeah. one I read to you, Chris? Uh, I can't remember. Something about being a dick. Uh, uh, nose no, job. Uh, uh, or something. Dick nose. Yeah. yeah, dick nose. That's what it was. Oh, dick nose, yeah. Wild. What the hell? Yeah. And, oh, man. All these, all these characters were just weird. I... I have so many questions because this is like, it's like this movie couldn't decide what it wanted to be because there's a lot of animal house, a lot of like frat. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. The party bit would have made way more sense if they were in college too. Right. Because this yeah. party, this party is huge. This is an yeah. insane party and there is no way they're throwing this party and the cops are not showing up for one. Um, and there's so many people in this house, and 
I want more information on whose house this is because this is someone's house and there's people like wrestling with whipped cream in the middle of the the living room. Yeah. And but like with like their hands tied behind their back right. or something doing. I don't understand. Right. That. And just in some underwear. And Styles yeah. is just Styles is holding court. And yeah. somehow he is the he is he went from no one caring that Styles was there to being in charge of the fun, right? And and uh, uh, weird. I'm okay with it. Like okay, cool. Like I get it. Styles is a personable dude. Like I could see him being the kind of guy who's just like, okay, I'm gonna take this situation by the horns, and now everyone look at me. Um, another. Little like I don't know. This really struck me as hilarious. The the lady girl whatever who was holding the hat that they drew the names out of, mm-hmm. who was like in some type of lingerie or something. She was the funniest, unintentionally funniest character in this entire movie to me, because she had a look on her face like this is not what the hell I signed up for. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to my agent. I was not supposed. You know. Like, she is just someone who's like, oh, yeah, it'd be cool. Like, you know, I'm central casting. They called me out to be in this weird werewolf movie. You know, I'm in the background getting this check, whatever. And they came up to her and was like, all right, put on this uh, this lingerie. You're going to walk around. You're like a Playboy bunny. Uh, you know, here, hold this hat. You know? She's like, uh, all right, well, I guess I got to pay rent. So, yeah, she was, she was not having this shit. And then they did... Like weird frat boy things right after that, where they t- took a bowl of Jello and dumped it down some lady's shirt, and right, right, and then Chubbs just like picks her up and just runs away with her, and I was like, "Bro, what high school party is this?" Like the high it, schoolers that I work with, like from any job, I'm like, I can't imagine any of them going to like stupid little parties where they do something like that. The the most unbelievable thing about all of this is we after the party we go home we do the transformation scene which i really want to talk about later but um they do the transformation scene and then presumably the next morning michael j fox's character gets up and he's like cool get ready to go to school you know, Dad, we're going to have this little heart-to-heart real quick, you know, while you explain to me that I just wolfed out. But I got to go to school. And everyone's at school the next day. And I'm like, there's no way you had a party of that size (laughs) and you're at school the next morning ready to function like a human being because that party is absolutely 100% still going on. Also, they did that on a weeknight. Right. What? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, that is a, they did that on, like, a Wednesday night. Hey, cool, let's go throw a multi-kegged party. Yeah, you couldn't wait yeah, until Friday? Yeah, there was Friday? so many kegs just stacked up. Like, where are you kids getting this from? Right. It was much, it was such a hard time that Styles had getting kegs. You would have think that someone would have been like, no, we, we got it. Right? But that scene... That scene where Michael J. Fox was growling at the um, the store owner to get the keg, I didn't. Oh, listen, f- seven year old Mark didn't know what a keg was because he was seven, but he was walking around growling, going, "Give me a keg of beer," uh, <laughs> you know, because I thought that was the coolest thing in the history of the world when I was seven years old. I was like, man, werewolves are so cool. I was talking, uh, never mind, I'm not going to say that. But it was Why? it was super cool. I can imagine <laughs> like you saying that to your dad and your dad's just like, ha <laughs> uh, Boy. What a kid. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he did. He was like, what are you talking about? I was like, oh, a keg of beer. <laughs> so... Can we talk about how cool Boof is? I, what, what's the name? Why Boof? I don't know or care. Okay. You know, every got, movie's just supposed to have like that one character it pulled me that out you're just like, what is this name? But we're just going to roll with it. Well, it's like, it's like everyone in that movie had, had a nickname that they went by. And everyone called that character by their nickname. 
Yeah, but I mean, which I mean, feels st- unbelievable that like the parents are calling the people by this nickname instead of like, oh yeah, hi Leslie, like hi Boof. I mean, if that's Styles, what your kids Chubb. like, Styles is actually a name. Let's think about that. No, no, St- Styles is one no, hundred. He's wearing a sunglasses inside. That's a nickname. I don't Let- want. You know what? <laughs> I'm just going to say, in the Teen Wolf series from MTV, they did have a character named Styles, and that was his name. Anyways, <laughs> nerd. <laughs> hey, man, that was a good show. But, in high but school. I was so mad. I was so mad most of the way through this movie that it, that Michael J. Fox's character was so obsessed over this this one lady who did who was like, "I'm not going to show him or give him the time of day." And this kind of falls into like that '80s trope of like, "Oh yeah, we got this beautiful blonde woman, you know, who's blonde and she's a cheerleader and she's a beautiful." But Boof was like Boof was hot, right? Like Boof was hot, and she was charming, and she got like the scene where like Michael J. Fox's character shows up, and Boof and 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 the dad are just playing bad, like just hanging out, and they're just having a good time. And I'm like, damn, man, like Boof's a catch. And, exactly. And she, and she and she was down, like. She was she she wanted her yeah, some Michael J. Fox. Dude, the other girl was just like boring too. She was she just sitting was. there. Yeah. Every time you saw her at a basketball game, she was like sitting in the stand, reading her lines while everyone else is like over there having a good time, hooting, hollering, and she's just like, "Oh, I've got to practice for my play." And then any other time, she was like trying to be seductive, but you're just like, "Nah, I don't." I ain't falling for it. Yeah. No, Boof was Boof was Boof was the jam. She so. was a good time. Definitely. She was. And she was she was she was down for anything. Like she just took everything in stride. She didn't care about like, you know, when he turned into a wolf, it wasn't like you know, the 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 response when someone was like, "Hey, Boof, did you know?" And she's like, Psh. No, like she she still had that same kind of sarcasm or whatever. She was she was real. So yeah. But they ended up hooking up, so it was it, it was it was good. Good times. What did you guys think of the transformation scene? Because now it is all you, oh, well, apparently it was Sorry. great. Drop something. Uh not really, but um, uh, no. Because, I don't like the zoom ins on their fa- on his face because oh, you can man. Okay. actually see the makeup. Well, yeah, well, of course. <laughs> I mean, we <laughs> didn't have eighties, Chris. We didn't have fancy CGI see back in nineteen ninety five. I don't mean like fake latex. I mean like powder makeup. <laughs> you can see the fucking actual makeup on his face. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like that sometimes, you know. I mean, I think it's like an iconic type. Oh, I like the little pulsing. I like the pulsing things that they had under her skin. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was very kind of reminiscent. I don't, I, I don't know the guy who who did the makeup here. I guess I probably should have looked that up. But it looked like it was kind of in the same vein of the Michael Jackson's Thriller video when he was changing. You know, a bunch of stuff pulsing and and the nails growing, and it seemed like they probably used the same kind of practical effects for both of those things. Um, you know, but again, seven-year-old Mark was was all about this transformation scene. I was really kind of concerned about just like the design of this bathroom. Again, I really was focusing on the wrong shit when I was watching this. Um, Fair. There was a window in the door of this bathroom. That presumably just went out to the hallway. Yeah. And I'm like, because there was a curtain in there. And I'm like, who has a ba- or a window into their bathroom? And then I thought about it and realized that my father upstairs in that bathroom has a window. Uh, in it's, that- just a gla- it's just a glass door. It's not even a window. Right. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, and how it sucks. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> so, but at least that's kind of upstairs and sequestered away from everyone. Like, that has, like, legitimately presumed, I mean, it's a one-story house, I think. But, yeah, so that just, no, it's two. Anyway, but no, like, that dumps out into the hallway. You got a windowed bathroom door. I, I focused on the wrong thing, guys. I know, but. No, 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 no. you're right, and though. That's fair. I mean, I was looking at the tile in the bathroom because I was like, oh, that's a nice shade of green. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that scene where he's literally changing or, like, starting to change and his dad's like, what are you doing in there? And he's like, I'm, uh, busy. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's just like, well, let me in. And it's like, my guy, your son could be doing anything. What if your kid is not actually transforming into a werewolf and something else is going down? You gonna walk in on that, my man? He just happened to find a magazine <laughs> out in the woods and brought it into his uh, bathroom with a window. Hmm. Well, I'm pretty sure. I'm well. I'm pretty sure. His, I mean, his dad. I'm sure knew exactly what was going on. But his wolf yeah, what, senses what were going t- off. Right. What a terrible dad to never mention, hey, at some point you might turn into a werewolf. Right. At any point in his life, until the moment it happens. That way he is just, he's freaking out, losing his mind. Especially because, like, we, you have that scene in the hardware shop where he you could tell that he's obviously irritated by the dog whistle that his dad must hear. Mm-hmm. You know, because they have to have, like, the same kind of senses, I would believe, that his dad yeah. has to hear it, and then he's physically in pain with this dude blowing the whistle because he don't know what's going on. And I would imagine that Michael J. Fox would, would come back and be like, I heard this dog whistle. Like, this kid was blowing this whistle, and I just heard it. What's, you know, that's weird. That would have prompted the conversation to be like, hey, okay, we need to talk. You know, you're showing yeah. signs. You know, it's funny to think is just be like, uh, he's old. He's probably just losing his hearing. <laughs> Look, I I loved the dad werewolf design. Yes, because it, it was so very good. it was so wholesome and corny. Mm-hmm. Just I would one hundred percent picture like that's the way. That's the way my father would look if he was a werewolf. Like just with like the button up shirt and just being like. Ha, it's me. <laughs> but Danny would have, like, the white fur. Oh, 100%. Always. Yeah. Stark white. He looked more like Bigfoot than a werewolf, too. Yeah, he did. Oh, so I think that's I think that's it. I think that's all the, the, the teen wolf notes I have. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> One more thing. Did you guys see the background penis in <laughs> the last scene? No. Really? In the, like, where they're, when he wins the game? Yes. No. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. I don't usually do this. Uh, just keep on recording. Okay. Keep on recording. I am going to share this with you, oh, and geez. we are going to watch it together. You get to watch penis with Mark? <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> now, we're about to go into credits. This does the thing that a lot of 80s movies does, where it's just like, cool, we, we, we won, we're going to credits. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to pause this, but keep your eye behind the dad when they when they cut back and they do a wide shot with Michael J. Fox and Boof and the dad up in the stands. Also, the way that uh, Michael J. Fox's father is picking him up, I thought that was weird. Did you notice that too? No. Wait for it. Okay. Boom. Look right over his arm. You Bro. see Mike. Hold on. Watch him. Just get your pants down. He's like, boop. And then he covers it up. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. So there, yeah, I am. I am surprised you guys did not know about uh, Teen Wolf penis. I think I was too busy watching 
the weird pickup from his dad that I was just like, what yeah. is happening here? But, uh, yeah, obviously, if they had, like, clothes for just, like, the background people, Homeboy's pants did not fit. And so he just didn't have them zipped, I feel like. They were like, it's one of those type of things. I like to think that he was like, this will be funny. Yeah. The director sees him, put a jacket in front of your pants! <laughs> Knowing how Hollywood works, if I don't think they would have allowed to be like, oh, his pants are short. Just be there with your zipper off. It's fine. It's I, I think they would have been like, oh, it's not working. Go home and get some jeans because they're just jeans. Yeah. He wouldn't have had to go to wardrobe. So, yeah, that's that's Teen Wolf. Do we uh, did we ever decide if we want to do like ratings and stuff like, oh, man, it's 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 it gets four cools out of seven. No. That gets three ow <laughs> out of five. <laughs> it wasn't bad enough to be fun to me. And it was like fine. No, I can accept that. Everyone like it was it was I think part of the problem too, right? Is if you guys have seen um I know Raven definitely has because we watched it together. Not another teen movie. Yeah. There are a lot of moments in that movie in Teen Wolf that are like Kind of similar. Yeah. Like, just like a, a little... If they had gone one more step to make it more parody just a little bit, it would have been a hysterical movie. Yeah, well, no, because... Th- they those, needed those to. Movies. I just mean there are parts about that that are like, they're funny and they... No, well, see, like... They're similar. All those, like, quote-unquote movie movies, um, yeah. like, this is the... This and a lot of these 80s, because... I'm sure we'll we will cover this ground the more movies that we do from from this era, but this is almost cookie cutter stuff that was happening in this movie, like the party, the you know, um, yeah, it's uh, the classic style of the like 1980s where it's right. like I'm in love with this one girl, but there's the other girl that I've been friends with for like ever. That's like, oh, she's yeah. the one. A hundred percent. I go from nerd to jock, and then I realize everyone hates me, so I should just be myself. Like, uh, yeah, classic like, 80s style. Yeah, th- th- this is a, a formula that a, a tale as old as time. And, yeah, it's... But werewolf. You, yes, but with a werewolf <laughs> um, that sniffs out weed in Styles Garage. Uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of see where you're coming from. It doesn't need to be parody, but like, I don't know. It's like it was too vanilla. They didn't push it in any one direction to me. Like, if they had pushed it back a little bit to be B movie territory, oh, it would have been amazing. Or pushed it a little more in the other direction to like push a couple more envelopes or something. I don't know. It was just like a, a, a ten out of twenty. <laughs> Well, I've I've never seen the show, but apparently the show is does that like it it, it goes on more of a kind of uh, I don't know we'll say light horror horror type of yeah. type of note like it seems like that's the the envelope they want to push, which is fine I guess I don't know it it seemed it seemed like something I, I was never really interested in it. Like my I'm team not going like, to recommend it to you. Cause I feel like you'd be like, mm, not really. It's basically like one of those things that like for teenage girls, right? Thing, which yeah. is it, what it, I was when I watched it. It, it, yeah. it seemed very, very much like it, it had the same kind of vibe as a twilight, you know, yeah, like we're, we're going to get a bunch of good looking GQ'd up, you know, teenagers quote like, unquote and looking at the pictures it looks like Riverdale yeah yeah that too like you could compare it to Riverdale or Sabrina the teenage witch or like <laughs> the new Sabrina yeah. yeah like stuff like that it's honestly like something like that ahead of its time of the other <laughs> alright let's uh let's move on Let's let's go for the close and talk, do my favorite part of the show. Uh, we will let Chris go first because he's our guest this week. Chris, 
Every week we like to ask people what made them happy this week as a way to make sure that we go out on a good note because we like having positivity in our lives. So tell me, Chris, what has made you happy this week? I got to hang out with my brother today. Oh, Smiley. What if he was actually talking about Chad? I know. I was just, I was just about to say, <laughs> me and Chad, did you guys go eat lunch together? Nah. nah. <laughs> we got to talk about Pokemon and convince Mark that he's going to play Pokemon and he can stream it to me and I can watch him play Pokemon and give him tips. Man, I got to have time to stream. That's fine. That's fair. Or better yet, if I'm going to stream it to you, you need to be on at the same time I'm on. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Yeah. Pick a time. Okay. There you go, see? <laughs> like. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't really do anything until like 9 o'clock at night because then that's when the girls go to yeah. bed. Because I know as soon as I start start deciding I'm going to want to do something, they'll be like, oh, you're doing something? And you're talking to Uncle Chris? And you're in front of the microphone? Yeah. And Amy will just yeah. sit here and lurk. And she'll be like, Dad, Dad, Dad. Dad, dad. Well, and she's been, oh boy, she's been on one these past couple days. Oh, it's it's been an event. But we ain't going to talk about that. Raven, <laughs> what has made you happy this week? I did something that I've wanted to do for three years now. I shaved off all my hair. <laughs> so I am rocking half an inch of hair on my entire cranium. I'm going to need to see a picture of that. All right. Uh, I am planning on shocking everyone. Chris is the only one, like, within my family and friends <laughs> realm back home that uh, knows that I've done this. So I'm literally going to go to Thanksgiving at uh, Jim and Patricia's and see Chris's entire side of the family over there and let them see that, to which I know his grandmother's going to be like, now, why would you do that? Oh, uh, to I'm, then go to I've never wanted to be at their Thanksgiving more than more, more, more than now. It for you. Oh, thank we'll you, dude. That. I'm going to walk in seen... with a beanie and just plop it on and plop it off at some point. And they're just going to be like, why? <laughs> but uh, I'm Mark, also then w- going to Knoxville to <clears throat> see my grandparents and the rest of my family over there. <laughs> Uh, And I'm going to do the exact same thing. And then my mom and my aunt, who have been telling me for three years to not shave my hair, because it's part of being a woman that you should have long hair and do it and stuff. And I'm like, "Ah, not me. Sorry. I didn't didn't catch that drift of femininity. Ooh. That's a hard word. It is a hard word. Femininity. There's like too many ends in it. From you guys. Femininity. <laughs> and then I get to show my best friend on Black Friday. So it's going to be a fun weekend of just people just constantly being like, what, what are we doing here, man? <laughs> awesome. What about you? I need you to send Mark the picture now so we can have his reaction to what dad's reaction will be. Uh, what yeah. dad's reaction would be? Yeah. yeah. Like, I want... <laughs> Send it to me, and then and then after I get done saying what's made me happy, I will give you guys a live on the air reaction, and give you my interpretation of how our father will react to this to this transformation. <laughs> what do you like, Mark? So originally, originally I was really struggling to be like I was thinking throughout the week. Man, what am I going to talk about that's made me happy this week? Because nothing was really happening. And it wasn't like anything bad was happening. It's just that, you know, I was I was just moseying along with life. And, um, you know, and it's just, just kind of just there. Wasn't good or bad. It was just there. And nothing really special was happening. And then uh, Thursday morning, woke up so super early for no reason um i mean i'm talking like 3 30 in the morning and couldn't get back to sleep because i'm dumb and i was like man i'm bored let me go in here and just 
get on the computer and do stuff on the internet. And I looked up when my parts for my 3D printer were finally going to get here from China. And they were like, hey, today. I was like, oh. So, like I said, Friday. Uh, actually, all my good stuff that I'm about to talk about has happened in like the last 48 hours. So just strap in. I was having car problems with my key fob. Got that jam fixed. Um, real quick. Cost me like five bucks. Awesome. One good thing. I got my 3D printer back and working, which it's been down for three months. It's up and working now. I'm back to printing my Boba Fett armor. I'm so excited. And nice. then uh, yesterday, me and the entire family went out to eat Mexican food. And this is the first time we've eaten out in like, this is literally the first, uh, the first time that I've eaten out at a sit-down restaurant that wasn't fast food in probably six months. Uh, since I've started wow. losing weight, and then the only fast food that I've actually eaten was probably Chick-fil-A because I can get grilled chicken there. So this was a very special thing for me because I'm on my cheat weekend, and uh, tomorrow I'm going to live my best life when we do Thanksgiving uh, in Hawkinsville. But um, so when we got back home, I noticed everyone was acting weird, and I was coming in here to check on my 3D printer and how my prints were turning out. And then all of a sudden, I heard coming from the um, uh, I heard coming from the the living room. I heard birthday. <laughs> it's your candle nice. blowing birthday. birthday. <laughs> and I was like, "What in the hell is going on?" And I go in there, and they're playing the video on the TV really, really loud. And they're like, come on, Dad, come on. And Kelly's like, your birthday present got here early. It wasn't supposed to be delivered for another two weeks for when your birthday was here, but it got here early. So here, go out to the front porch. I'm like, what? And sure enough, it was sitting on the front porch. They got me a new uh, gaming chair. Or not, 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 you know, computer slash gaming chair because mine was old and busted. So now I got this big, fancy, heavy duty uh, gaming chair that reclines and got lumbar support and uh, the sides close in like it's everything except electronic. And it's awesome. Nice. So, so yeah. Very nice. Um, yeah. And that's what's made me happy this week. <laughs> Hey man, oh, it's the little things in life. Uh, Chris, yeah. why don't you tell everybody where people tell tell everybody where they can find you on social medias? No, nah, it's okay. I don't want to be found. Okay, <laughs> you can find him at Chris Holland on Twitter. Sure, <laughs> that's not true. You can find me. I, I gen- you can I, find me. On Mastodon, when Twitter dies, yeah, download a Mastodon. Yeah, I, I, I actually downloaded it just to check it out. Yeah, me too. Just friend us all on Discord. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Raven, where can they find you? Um, until Twitter dies, uh, spooky underscore underscore Raven, or on Instagram at that's so Raven Ellis, and there's underscores under all those words. What about and you, Mark? Where are you at? You can find me at Turtles Do It on Twitter um, and on Instagram, I think. I think yes. that's the handle I'm using on Instagram. Uh, you can follow the show at Nerd for No Reason on all the important socials. And yeah, I think that's it. Thanks so much for listening to us, everybody. I want you to go out and do something wonderful today. Go explore your favorite medias and have a good week. Goodbye. Woo. Bye, everybody. Oh, hold on. Rewind. Rewind. Oh, because you didn't look at because the photo. I didn't, I didn't look at the photo. Hold on. Here we go. Now, to the voice of Danny Holland. Okay. I'm looking at the before. Oh, wow. no. Nope. That is, that's oh, right wow. after I cut it off. Yeah. Oh, wow. True. Oh, man, hold on a second. I did something, and it just cut you out of the picture. Like, just, oh, man, <laughs> iPhones are weird. Hold on. A, okay. Something. True. All right, I got, I'm going to have to explore that later. Um, 
Man, you know, look at a phone good. No, my phone did something I didn't know it oh. could do. Like literally, I hit a button and it cut out like just you and took out all the background stuff. That's weird. like a perfect cut. I've never seen it done before. Wow, look at your not hair. Right. Oh Honestly, man, it's a vibe. I like it a lot. Yeah. Uh, there's another girl that I work with at the, um, my grooming place. Who she has had hers shaved since like last December, and I like express the fact that I was like, oh, I've been wanting to do it for like three years now, and everyone at work was like, Raven, you would look good with it, do it, and I was like, I don't know, we'll see, because I was always like, what if I have a weird shaped head? Then I have to walk around for months with that. But also, it's winter. I hate doing anything with my hair, absolutely anything, and I also have like. <sighs> Uh, I get, like, sensory overload a lot with, like, noises and feelings. So the fact, like, I'm if my hair would, like, touch my neck sometimes, I'd be like, I want to die. I don't want this. So now I don't have this problem. I literally just use the tiniest amount I am amount curious of, to know what the first cut was uh, you did, though. Shampoo. Because you told me you were, like, you were, like, in the bathroom with a razor, day. right? And that's it. It's great. Did you go straight down the middle first, or did you... No, I went on the sides because I was like the undercut thing that I said would look like cool. If I don't like the length that it is, at least like beside my ear, you should have done. Do you should have like, done the undercut you know, first, and then let me see a picture of that shave type. Just thing. to know, mm-hmm. and then do the full, then do the rest of it, like right then and there. I just wanted to know what the undercut looked like. That's why I wondered if you had just been like, nope, right down the middle. <laughs> uh, I had to go. That's what I when I buzzed my hair back. in like fourth grade, something like that. And went to the barber, and the barber was like, all right, so we're going to buzz. You said, do you want your hair buzzed short? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And he goes, okay. Went right down the middle first. He goes, you still want to do it? And I was like, I don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think all my right. father I, I think my father wouldn't say yep. anything. I think he would just, like, look at it and be like, oh, uh, your hair. Um, yeah. I, he should be um, like. What would you, what'd you do that for? Yeah. Like that kind of thing. And a vet would just be like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that little like, okay thing that she does all the time. Yeah. When she's like, sure. <laughs> but honestly, like, I was a little worried going to my regal job. Because like, you know, I work with a bunch of like teenagers. And I'm like, I don't want a bunch of little shitty teenagers <laughs> over there being like, <laughs> What, yeah, cancer or some stupid shit like that. But honestly, everyone either just like doesn't acknowledge it, or like everyone goes, "Oh, did you cut your hair?" And I'm like, "What <laughs> stupid ass question is that?" Yeah, I cut my hair, and most of the people have been like, "Yo, that's really cool." Especially when I'm like, when I tell them like I hate the stigma of being a woman, and like in my family, it's. You have to wear makeup, you have to have your hair done nice, you have to dress nice, and if you're not wearing lipstick, you're not a real woman. Uh, I don't I don't do any of that. I'm going to be real honest. And so I was like, just just get rid of it. And so everyone's like, yeah, no. Fuck it. Do whatever makes you happy. So I like that. Yeah. So are you going to like yeah. do cool colors <laughs> with your hair now? Absolutely. But I was waiting until at least after Thanksgiving. For like at least the initial shock of, hey, you give my Raven grandmother doesn't a heart have any attack. hair anymore, and then I get to do the fun things that they can be like, well, maybe she it's not that. She almost had a heart attack. Because if I just show I up, up with just green hair, yeah. She was. She barely said anything to me, gone. and it's because she was angry. She was so mad that I had that green <laughs> hair. Yeah. Nope. Thanksgiving. She's gonna. Thanksgiving's gonna be funny. To watch her well, flip through emotions to try to figure out what she's Hooray. supposed to be. Because she misses you a lot. And with what's going on over there right now, not to go into that, but with things that are going on over there, right? Um, she's a lot more emotional. So she's going to, you know, be so excited to see you and will cry to see you. And then the hair will happen and she'll be like, uh, 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 and she's going to short circuit. It's going to be kind of funny. <laughs> Not even that. She's just gonna. Her brain's just gonna stop working for a minute. She's like, ah, what? Mm. Ah. She's gonna send that I mean, poor woman ah, to the uh, hospital. Uh. <laughs> oh. 
I yeah. want I want videos. <laughs> I want a video, I did Chris. Tell Papa, right after he got a surgery, I was like, I'll shave my hair in uh, support of your solidarity. <laughs> and he was like, no, you don't have there to do go. that. So I was like, uh, if it goes badly, I'm just going to be like, yeah. I no, thought we no. were all dressing up as Papa for Thanksgiving dinner. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.